In EcoBank, we went across, to, I think, 34 countries by the time I left. There was no country we invested in that I hadn't gone to. I hadn't walked the streets. I hadn't spoken to people. And I found that in most cases, what I was looking for was the supply-demand gap. If there's a, demand, a gap in supply and demand, you have a market. As that gap shrinks, as is happening with the telcos now, the growth starts to disappear. So it's not interesting anymore. If you don't understand the country, if you don't understand the culture, if you don't talk to the people, you don't have a feel for them, markets can be very deceptive. You can go into markets and you say, oh, this is a crazy market. Like Lagos. Lagos, it's like the proverbial carrot at the tip of the donkey's nose. You never get there. A lot of people lose money in Lagos because they say it's a big market. But is it the right market? Do you have to go there? Are you, are you already fully developed in your home market before you start? If you only have a 5% market share in your home market, well, why are you living? Why are you going somewhere else? Make the necessary trade-offs. And I will talk specifically about Ecobank because I was, I was good. We took the view. When I joined Ecobank, and we had it second time. I, mean, I, I was there twice. I went the first time, and then I left, and I came back. We looked at the African continent. We looked at Togo. Obviously, Togo, you can't grow a big bank in Togo. That's not possible. It's, it's $6 billion GDP, $5 million people. You're not going anywhere. So we looked at Africa, and we said, what are we going to do? How do we conquer the continent? And we took the view that we would sacrifice efficiency for growth. And we started that journey. And we acquired, I think, we were at five countries in, in 2005, and we were at 34 countries in 2012. We were 3,000 people in 2005. We were 20,000 in 2012. $3 billion GDP um, balance sheet in 2005, 20 billion in 2012. 300 branches in 2005, 1,200 branches in 2012. Now that is basically sacrificing profitability for growth. Why did we do it? We did it for two reasons. One is, we thought we knew the continent. First of all, scale is important in financial services, as you all know. And we were small. We we're just a $3 billion bank. Secondly, we thought there was a window of opportunity. And it turned out we were right. We can't do that today. The rules have changed after the financial crisis. The rules have changed because the markets have changed. And thirdly, but most importantly, we're looking at the Dangote factor. But you have, you have these big South African banks. And Africa was their backyard. And they were busy going to Russia, Latin American places. And we said, thank God, please keep going there. Give us some time to do Africa. And so we, we thought that eventually they'll come back to Africa. But by then, we would be established in Africa. And we would have grown our business enough to be able to have a fighting chance because we certainly didn't have the size of the capital. And so that's what we did. So we moved very, very quickly. And we took advantage of that opportunity. Now, is that the right strategy? Some people might say, probably not. But what is the right strategy? And how do you measure strategy? Is it, is it a five-year thing? Is it a 10-year thing? Is it a 15-year thing? Um, the business is cyclical. Banking, as you know, goes through cycles. Um, every major bank is having problems or coming out of problems right now. So we took the view that if you take a long-term view, you can actually sacrifice profits, but grow to a size where you have a fighting chance because you've got the scale to fight. Ladies and gentlemen, execution is everything. It doesn't matter what your strategy is. If you don't execute properly, you're dead. 
So I start from the basic that there's no perfect strategy or formula. There's none. Or else you go buy it, right? And you, then everyone can buy it and then you execute. No, there isn't. Be bold and fearless. Now, for me, this is the most important factor in dealing in Africa. You see fear in people's eyes. Jeez, what am I going to do in Nigeria? What am I going to do in Zimbabwe? I hear all these horrible things about it. And I say, have you been there? Because there are people living there. Right? Um, and the fear factor is one of the challenges, I think, that South African companies have. You have to get over the fear factor. Because that is a competitive advantage for those of us who come from the rest of Africa. 